I fell in love with Madagascar in London's Kew Gardens because it was there that I saw a selection of plants that looked like nothing I'd ever seen before. They were more like experiments than organisms. Madagascar drifted away from the continent of Africa 65 million years ago, creating a unique ecosystem. It's over 6,000 miles away, so after 20 hours in the air, including a short but only slightly frightening internal flight, I arrive in the charming and slightly loopy town of Marowancetra, which is the gateway to the Masawala Peninsula, Madagascar's largest national park. It's costing about £60 to take a boat and a guide there, but the sense of excitement I have as we take to the water in search of wilderness is free. I think one of the big reasons people come to Madagascar is to get something that they can't get anywhere else. There is a fantastic sort of Jurassic Park feeling to being here. You do get the sense that you're in a true wilderness, that there's nowhere in the world like this part of Madagascar. The only other way to get where I'm going is by hiking for three days through the rainforest. I hope you can get a sense of just how far away we are from everywhere else at the moment. The Shea Arrow Lodge costs a hefty £8.50 a night, but it does come with an alfresco buffet. If I get hungry later on, I'll just reach out of the window and get myself a pineapple. Ursula's taking me into the rainforest in search of some extraordinary animals. It's so beautiful. We do keep expecting to see a dinosaur just poking its head around the corner there. About 75% of Madagascar's extraordinary animal and plant life is endemic. In other words, not found anywhere else in the world. And without Ursula, I probably wouldn't find anything at all. Toby, I found a snake. A snake? Yeah. Brilliant. Is it a poisonous snake? No. No, oh, because that would be a very good way to get rid of me. Yeah, you see? It's fast. Be careful. Eh? But Madagascar wouldn't be Madagascar without seeing a lemur. But to find one, we've got to open our ears before our eyes. Apparently, what we're meant to do is listen out for a sort of sound a bit like a... <clears throat> I thought that Ursula had bronchitis or something initially, but she was just doing the sound. But Ursula's impression of a 40-a-day smoker was nothing like this. It's an incredible sound. It's quite scary though, isn't it? Lemurs are effectively what came before monkeys. They survive here because of Madagascar's isolation from the African mainland. Deforestation's a big problem in Madagascar and it's got more endangered species of mammal than anywhere else in the world. It's no wonder those red-ruffed lemurs are staying up there. If you found it difficult to tell from that distance what the lemurs looked like, they sort of looked a little like black-faced foxes that had been put in the drying machine. So they were very, very sort of fluffy, but obviously sort of crossed with a cat and a monkey. So really not like a fox at all, more like a lemur, I suppose. Yeah, watch out, Attenborough. Madagascar's famous for its flora and fauna, but I wanted to meet its folk too. This place, Maro etc., is the kind of town you set a novel in. In order to explore it for a day, I've enlisted the guidance of Rakutu. It cost about £30 to tour the locality and meet the locals. In the tropical northeast of Madagascar, Maro etc. is largely focused on farming and fishing. It's a basket of it's shrimp. fish from sea, but they're living here now. And I find out that 80% of the world's vanilla comes from Madagascar too. Right. But then Rakutu drags me to a place where something a little more exciting Bonjour. is brewing in the tropical heat. First you notice the smell. It's of men, sweat and hot booze. Because this farm makes becha becha. Sugarcane is squeezed through the giant mangle and the juice is turned into something that tastes rather special. Tastes like very, very old and bitter beer. <laughs> Will you ask um, this man here yeah. how many times a day he gets hit in the head? Okay, it's a good question. <laughs> it's many times. <laughs> it's so hot and stinky. We head back into town on a dangerous quest 
in a dangerous car. We're going off road. Yeah. We are in the back streets of Maro and Cetra in Madagascar on a search for the infamous. The tomato frog is unique to Madagascar, and right now it feels like there may be just one. The elusive amphibian we're hunting for is an endangered species because its natural habitat is threatened. The hunt continues. We found a frog. Yes, yeah. What? Is it going to be exciting, this frog? Oh, it is. No, it's awesome. Look at it. Brilliant. As frogs go, it's very, very quickly. Though I do wonder for a moment whether someone's painted a normal frog red just for my benefit. And I'm still confused as to why they call it the tomato frog. I think it's fair to say at this point that we are now off the track beaten by tourists. Maybe that's because I'm visiting a graveyard. Although it's a largely Christian country, the people of Madagascar, or Malagasy, have some unusual traditions or fardies associated with death. Many of them are related to a kind of ancestor worship. Here, for example, they exhume the bodies of their relatives four years after burial, clean the bones and then place them in tombs above the ground, which allows for the possibility of communicating with the dead. Rakuta recently contacted his mum. Have you noticed her help? If you believe, it's mm. work. If you don't believe, it's not work. I see. You must believe it. It's a prayer. Yeah, prayer. Like me, I don't go, I don't go to the church, but I pray to my God and mm. my ancestor, always. Mm. So, Miss, let's take it, then we... Madagascar is such a lively place. Even death has lost its sting here. Our next destination, though, could not have been more full of life. Let's go. Hey! hey. <laughs> I do ah! <laughs> Don't know how to say this in Malagasy, but you've made uh, a perfect ending to a brilliant day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you thought it was funny. Thank you. There's a wonderful openness to the people I met in Madagascar that's best summed up by the way that they would point to my camera and say, give me a picture, rather than just take my picture. It's the kind of destination, though, where you'll have an adventure whether you plan to or not.